Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar of the second day of the Food Waste Fest. I'm Brecht van der Meulen. I'm working at Herwin, the umbrella organization for social and circular enterprises. And I'm project manager of Flavor, a project on food surplus and social employment. Today, we're going to talk about food hubs. Better yet, the utopian food hub and the challenges we face, um, we face to get there. Um, it's a, 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 the food hub uh, doesn't exist yet. Uh, there is, um, there is a, at, the, at, the, at this moment, there is no regional solution for a food hub. This is why this first workshop was basically initially conceived as, as a brainstorm, a face-to-face -face brainstorm. Um, now, this isn't possible, so we shifted focus a bit um, and go about it a bit differently. So what is a food hub? We don't have the monopoly on the term food hub. So we've asked you uh, a few weeks ago already um, for some keywords and what you understand what a food hub is. You see those keywords on the left hand side of your screen in this word cloud. Um, so of course there is food at the center of this word cloud. Uh, you have distribution. Those two terms are no surprise, of course. We also have processing in there, local farmers, local producers, um, keywords like environmental, innovation, logistics, social. These are all elements that fit also in our definition of a dream food hub. Uh, what is our dream food hub and how are, how are, go are we going to present it uh, in the coming workshop? You see the arrows on the right hand side of your screen. There we have uh, the three main elements, which for us are part of the ideal food hub. It's about the short supply chain. It's about local farmers, local producers. It's about the distribution platform, and it's about processing the uh, excess surplus that can be redistributed uh, for human consumption. In all these elements, you have social employment, which can be part uh, of each of them. We will highlight these three elements during uh, the coming workshop. And the first uh, element we are going to highlight is a uh, short supply chain, chain, local producers, local farmers. And Michael from Kortom Leuven and Katrien from Steunpunt Korte Keten are going to do that in a recorded interview that we are going to show um, in a minute. They are going to talk about the challenges they face and the challenges that go um, with a, a regional food hub. Next up will be Caro, my colleague, and she will give an overview of distribution platforms which already exist in Flanders. These platforms collect food surplus, redistribute food surplus to people in food insecurity, all the while working with people far from the labor market. These distribution platforms could well be the basis for a future, future food hub. They already collect surplus, they redistribute it. Um, they also could uh, combine this with short supply chain and maybe also processing locally or at an external site. Talking about processing, we also have Lieve from The Winning, and she will talk about uh, processing food surplus um, with people far from the labor market and the challenges that go with it, also uh, combined with a uh, future food hub. Of course, this is a workshop, and like I said in the beginning, it was originally conceived as a brainstorm. Now that's a bit hard in this virtual environment, but we've prepared uh, still three polls for you. Um, the first poll uh, will be launched um, in some uh, seconds, um, and the other ones will pop up on your screen during the workshop. We will use your input uh, at the end of the workshop to basically round it up and, um, and finalize, finalize this workshop, uh, first webinar of, of today. Questions. You might have questions, of course. You can ask those questions in the public chat. Um, we will moderate them, we will collect them, and we will um, answer them at the end of the workshop, if time allows. If time doesn't allow, we can give you the answer afterwards because we get your uh, email address uh, together with the question. But we will also give you three other options to ask questions, to share your thoughts, your ideas at the end of this workshop. So now you will probably see um, the first poll, or it should be coming up. And then 
I will give firstly the word uh, between brackets to uh, Michael from Kortom Leuven and Katrien from Steunpunt Korte Keten. They will explain to you in a, in a recorded interview, in a video, um, what the challenges are, what a short supply chain is, what local producers are, um, and how they see a food hub in the future. Kortom Leuven is a cooperative of farmers uh, in the region around Leuven. Leuven is a city of 100,000 inhabitants uh, at the east side of Brussels. We started up six months ago. We worked together, uh, the, the, the 15 farmers worked together to uh, organize their sales to supermarkets and to restaurants in the region. And they also worked together to, uh, yeah, to do the logistics together. So, um, that's the big advantage of Kortom Leuven. Not each farmer has to drive himself or herself to a possible client, but we group all products and we deliver them together. And that's also the big advantage for the client. He or she gets the products delivered at a certain, uh, at two days of the week at a fixed time. We're now a group of farmers and um, that's with the potential of I think still five or 10 farmers in the, in the future to grow. And we have uh, 20 clients, but also there's also, I think we, we're not at full potential right now. One of the big successes is that the farmers, um, they lead the cooperation. And so they decide where the priorities are. The farmer sets the price um, and it's all, it all starts at the farmer side, and um, so that's, that's a, an important principle. A food hub for us, for example, like in the like in, uh, city of Leuven or Ghent or Antwerp or Brussels, could be a place that is near the city and from where you uh, group all products, um, local products, but also international products like uh, yeah, bananas or oranges or, or olive oil um, and you combine them in the food hub and it's actually, actually a transportation hub where you combine them and deliver those products together to the city with more sustainable transportation like uh, cargo bikes or uh, small uh, e-cars and but also a place from, from where you start uh, your delivery to other places in the regions where you need to use a small van um, to, yeah, to reach them, actually. A food hub could also be something more than just a physical hub, but also a place where you do organize uh, things around food. And for example, workshops, uh, it could also be a place where, where innovation starts. It could be an incubator for new projects, projects like, for example, a new baker who works with Sardo or um, a project who, who wants to process uh, foods that uh, cannot be sold anymore, like uh, too small or too big apples, or for example, other products. So it could be, I think it, it should be really uh, an option to install an incubator there. It could be a, an incubator of innovation. The challenges are similar to Kortom Leuven. Kortom Leuven is a, a cooperation between actually farmers, but also clients. and. You have many parties who need to work together. You have the ch same challenge for a food hub because you work together with a lot of parties to meet that challenge. I think you need a lot of parties and investors also from, for example, a local government or the Flemish government um, or U European uh, investors uh, to start up this project because you need someone to coordinate and to lead the food hub uh, and to find um, synergies. We are a steunpunt Korte Keten and actually we are the answering for all questions around Korte Keten. And then is it good to find to tell us what is that Korte Keten? And then we uh, look at all initiatives to have a duurzaam offset system of land and tuinbouw products. Then we look at a lot of different companies and initiatives and so forth that are so different that you can't put them under one hood. But they houden zich wel min of meer aan enkele basisprincipes uh, die dat, waar de korte keten voor staat. En dat is enerzijds, je hebt uh, een betrokkenheid met je consument. Uh, je hebt een producent die inspraak heeft over de prijssetting. 
Um, je hebt een, een regionaal uh, gegeven daar rond. Um, je hebt een beperkt aantal schakels ook tussen die twee partijen. En je consument heeft een idee van hoe de deeltwijze is of, of hoe het product wordt gemaakt en verwerkt. Een steunpunt Korte Keten is in de eerste plaats voor land- en tuinbouwbedrijven. Um, die dus eigenlijk vragen hebben rond Korte Keten. Die willen gaan starten in Korte Keten of die willen doorstarten en een andere tak, een uh, andere verbreding gaan doen. En die kunnen eigenlijk hun vraag stellen of, of hun project gaan voorstellen. En een team van adviseurs gaat dan... Um, ja, met, met neutraal advies gaan afkomen, um, ook heel actueel advies. En die eigenlijk gaan begeleiden op maat um, om hun project te gaan verwezenlijken. Enkele voorbeelden van wat dat we doen is bijvoorbeeld informatie geven over wetgeving. Um, gaan kijken naar afzet- en marketingkanalen. Um, we gaan ook mee rekenen en dus we gaan uh, kostprijsberekeningen doen enzovoort. Om eigenlijk te zorgen dat, dat het project heel concreet wordt en heel uh, praktisch uitvoerbaar is. Dus dat traject gaan we samen met de, met de land- en tuinbouwer. Net omdat er eigenlijk heel wat bedrijven en initiatieven zijn, zijn die successen ook heel breed. Um, maar wat we zeker kunnen zeggen, dat zijn eigenlijk een aantal lijnen die dan we zien de laatste tijd. En dat zijn eigenlijk samenwerkingen tussen land- en tuinbouwers. Ook land- en tuinbouwers die met andere partijen gaan samenwerken, die dan misschien niet altijd voor de hand liggend zijn, maar die wel eigenlijk mooie projecten geven. Um, innovatie is zeker ook iets waar we heel uh, mooie successen in zien. Nieuwe manieren van marketing en verkoop. Uh, en zeker ook circulaire economie is iets wat heel erg belangrijk is in de korte keten. En waar we veel successen ook in zien. Een foodhub is, uh, naar de ervaring die ik zelf heb binnen uh, het project Hub in Brussel, is eigenlijk een plek van co-creatie. Maar waar je wel eigenlijk één grotere trekker hebt die eigenlijk andere partners kan meenemen. Voor mij is, is een foodhub een plaats waar verschillende partners kunnen samenwerken en waar dat eigenlijk net die sterkte van die foodhub naar boven komt in het versterken van elkaar en eigenlijk zo nieuwe uh, projecten en, en grotere uitdagingen te kunnen aangaan door die samenwerkingen. Um, en dan kijken we naar enkele voordelen. Hè. Bijvoorbeeld uh, door het, het bestaande te gaan versterken, moet je niet meer opnieuw warm water gaan uitvinden. Moet je niet eindeloos gaan vergaderen vanaf een wit blad papier. Omdat die tijd en dat geld mankeert ook vaak om, om zo lang te gaan bezig zijn met iets nieuw op te zetten. Bovendien heb je ook altijd wat kinderziektes die er al uit zijn. Um, door eigenlijk met een bestaand systeem verder te gaan. Zeker in, in logistiek en distributie is het ook belangrijk om te gaan uh, efficiënter worden, in te gaan rendabiliseren enzovoort. Uh, als iedereen met half lege camionettes gaat rijden bijvoorbeeld, het is dan beter om te gaan samenwerken, elkaar daarin te gaan versterken. Um, je kan het eigenlijk vergelijken, een klassiek bedrijf gaat vaak gaan vergroten om te gaan uh, efficiënter werken. In de korte keten denk ik dat het belangrijk is om te gaan samenwerken en zo ook die schaalvergroting te gaan bereiken. En zeker ook specialiseren is nog zo'n voordeel van, van die samenwerkingen van zo'n mogelijke foodhub. Um, als je bijvoorbeeld denkt, je, bent een, een, of je hebt een hoevenwinkel en je wilt gaan leveren, maar je hebt zowel vers als diepvries, als bio, als droge voeding. Als je dat allemaal in diezelfde camionet wilt gaan steken, wordt dat moeilijk. Ga je samenwerken, kan je gaan specialiseren en zeggen die doet dit, die doet dat, waardoor dat eigenlijk ook daar je efficiënter en rendabeler gaat werken. En ik denk dat er zeker mooie voorbeelden zijn, zowel in Wallonië als in het buitenland, waar dat je als producent niet alleen in zo'n foodhub komt afzetten, maar waar je ook bijvoorbeeld producten gaat inkopen voor je eigen winkel, waar je gaat uh, in een deelkeuken je producten verwerken. Er zijn ook voorbeelden van, van slachthuizen in, in coöperaties enzovoort. Dus eigenlijk waar je als producent veel meer kan in zo'n foodhub dan alleen maar afzetten, uh, waar je eigenlijk echt een heel netwerk kan creëren. Dus daar, daar zijn zeker veel mogelijkheden in en in Vlaanderen uh, komt dat zeker ook. En ik denk dat alle mensen die vragen hebben rond hoe start ik zo'n zo hub op of uh, ik wil daarvan gebruik maken, dat die zeker ook uh, bij ons als steunpunt kortketen terecht kunnen. In de rand van Brussel mogen ze zeker ook bij mij terechtkomen. Uh, good morning, um, I'm Caro and I'm a colleague of... Uh uh, that you saw. And as you know, what we're looking at is, um, is it possible uh, for a more regional food hub to combine, to align between different kind of initiatives that are existing already today? And I'm here now to present you the second type of uh, initiatives that are already existing, the social distribution platforms. What are they? 
So the social distribution platforms, they're mostly um, set up about, they started, I think, five, six years ago, and um, the most of them are set up by local authorities or under the stimulus of local authorities, and um, or the support um, with of the local uh, authorities. And what they are doing is, they are collecting food surpluses in the region that can be, uh, that, that can be a wider region where they, where they uh, collect the food surpluses from different um, suppliers, so they go to to auctions, to food companies, to the retailers, and also some are going to farmers. And then they go mostly back to the depot where they are sorting out this uh, food surplus and then they uh, divide it and distribute it to the social organizations in the region they're working it. So it can be in uh, the city or in the bigger city or in the region around cities. Why are they doing this? This is mostly uh, because of three reasons, it's, it's always the combination of these three uh, reasons, and that is to eliminate food waste, one of them, to create also jobs for people far from the labour market, all of them are working with people in social employment, and of course also to support people in, in, in uh, food poverty. So, um, <coughs> Where are they uh, situated? They're, we're talking about Flanders. So where are they situated? Is uh, You can see that um, in the province of Eastern Flanders and the uh, West Flanders and the province of Antwerp and Limburg, the, the region is already uh, yeah, be, uh, good covered. In the provinces of uh, East Flanders and Vlaams Brabant, there is still some work to do. So there, there by now there are about uh, 10 uh, distribution distribution platforms that are really active and that uh, are uh, working. The evolution, um, so you can see here that um, uh, over the years, I was started, they started before 2017, of course, but we started to get some figures from 2017 on. So uh, you can see that the number of um, distribution platforms is increasing. So today, let's say in 2020, we are 10. Also, the the, the food sur the amount of the food sur surplus collected is also increasing. And one of the things that's important is that they are really focusing on fresh products. That means that they also are getting experience in how to deal with uh, fresh food that are where, where the shelf life is just for uh, for for several days, sometimes just one day. Um, also, the proportion of fruit and vegetables is very high in what they collect, um, and they're working also with an increasing number of social organizations. The social organizations who, in their turn, they are working uh, with the people in uh, food poverty, and they do also other kind of social actions with these um, with uh, with these um, beneficiaries. <coughs> The number of people in poverty is also um, increasing, that, that is reached by the social uh, uh, distribution platforms, as well as the number of people that have been uh, employed by the, the social distribution platforms. That doesn't mean that they're working with 66 today, but it means that 66 people in 2019 have been working with the distribution platforms, and some of them also got already to the regular economy. Okay, what are the challenges then to become a food hub? Um, out of these experiences, we can say that <laughs> there are several challenges. Um, we have listed up them here, and you can see that one of the things is that um, what is the optimal location? Where should be this food hub? Should it be at the outskirts of the, of, the, of the cities? Should it be in an area where you are really close to the highways or to a railway? So that's, uh, that's one of the challenges. Also the logistics. You have also hear, heard from the other ones who have been talking already in this workshop that logistics is, is really is expensive. So how to organize it that you can have um, the transport, for example, that the vans that are running around are almost never empty. Then as an, another challenge is that uh, as we see, there are already a lot of different um, initiatives. How can we cleverly connect all what is already existing? And that means 
that you have to collaborate with a lot of stakeholders. And all these stakeholders have also their uh, kind of expertise. So that means that how to combine the expertise, while the expertise maybe is not always in the same direction. So it means how to bring together all these expertise and also to find out maybe not always are the necessary stakeholders involved, so that you have also to involve the, the necessary stakeholders. Maybe local authorities are not involved, so then you have to involve them. And also to find out what will be the focus on the in the chain. Will it be uh, really on the consumers or is it more B2B uh, where you will focus on, surely in the beginning? And as also said already, it is necessary to have a driving force in it. So who's taking the lead and a lead that is supported by the other stakeholders. Another challenge is that even though that you work with um, different kind of uh, ingredients and input, the output should be really qualitative products. Otherwise, you won't have co uh, customers. Financially affordable, that's also a channel. So ch a challenge, uh, how are you going to pay for it all? How are you going to get enough investment? How will be the balance between private and public funding? And also to be able to do your research and development because it has to be developed all the time. Um, the next challenge is, um, as we see and hear and read, is that this kind of initiatives mostly are really accessible for people from the middle class. But how can we make something that's also accessible for people who have a more vulnerable, who are living in more vulnerable situation? And it means also that you have to have means for communication and marketing so that everybody knows who you are and where you are, what you do, so that you get enough suppliers and customers. That's it for the social distribution platforms. And now we would like you to answer the last question on from all these challenges, which one is, in your view, the most important to start with? Hello, I'm Ben. Good day. I'm Liva from The Winning. The Winning is a social economy organization, and I'm responsible for the fo food and farm department. I will take you to a little road trip of the trial and errors we had in food waste. So who is The Winning? We are a social economy. We have uh, uh, employees who have difficulties to enter the regular job market. We have 413 employees and we have a, a wide spread of activities. We do green man management, we have a farm, we have a bakery, we have a central kitchen, four bistros and a farm shop. The baseline of our organization is the strength of social entrepreneurship. So what are the advantages from the winning we had in our food waste road trip? We have our own biological farm with milk, meat, vegetables. We have a central kitchen, so we can test uh, central. We have three restaurants. So uh, the test that we make in the central kitchen, we can trial with the customers in our restaurants. We have a farm shop, we have a bakery, uh, and we have the baseline from the winning is from seed to plate in our food department. We can experiment and test in our own chain of supply, and that's a big advantage that we have at our organization. So the food waste trial and errors we made, I want to take you to some examples. We have uh, made oyster mushroom products. We made uh, products from beer husk, soup, apple juice, and beer syrup. So the trial we made from oyster mush mushrooms, we made three finished products, hamburgers, balls, and crockets. We tested it in our own channel, so in the um, Horeca we have oh, three restaurants, and we did uh, yeah, some catering activities. We struggled really hard with final product quality, especially when we, when we want to scale it up. Um, it was really difficult for us because we don't have a lot of means, financial resources to invest in the right machinery. So uh, in the six months we tested, we saved 80 kilos of uh, mushroom um, 
but yeah, it was not viable for us to, to uh, go to market with the product. Uh, another example is the beer husks. Um, we have our own beer. So we tried to collect the beer husks at uh, the brewery and we wanted to uh, make three finished products. We tried cookies, we tried granola and we tried our bread. Um, this was also a really uh, difficult project for us. Um, we uh, lost a lot in uh, transportation costs because we have to collect, go to the brewery, collect the husks and drive back to our bakery. Then it took uh, six hours to dry the husk. So it was a really um, big investment from our operational activities because we couldn't use the oven for other products, uh, for our bread and uh, other products. And then uh, the third one was that uh, it was really difficult for our uh, employees to make uh, the recipe for the cookies. So uh, we tried it for six months. We saved uh, 282 beer husk kilos, but also we, we, we stopped with it because it was not viable uh, because of the big uh, transportation costs. Uh, one note, we still make granola, but we use the restaurant warmth of our oven, so we save a little energy waste here. The lessons learned for us in, in those three, uh, in those two uh, projects was uh, the lack of resources for innovation leads to lack of professionalism. Um, we struggled really hard to make an acceptable quality of the oyster mushroom products. And uh, scaling up was really difficult because of this lack of resources in R&D and in machinery. There was also really complex regulation for us in the bio and health and safety to master, also because we don't have a lot of means to invest in specialized employees. Um, you have to take all costs and accounts, uh, log logistic, the operational cost, the time, the use of the machinery, uh, it was no success for us, but it was a viable ID. But we still have some successes, so the soup from our ugly vegetables, the apple juice for our own apples, and now we are testing with pure syrup. So the case of the apple juice, um, we make a small quantity of apples, we just have uh, 1,200 kilos. Uh, and from the ugly fruits, the fruits that are not uh, the look and feel for going to a retail market, but are still really good in taste, uh, we make the apple juice. We also have uh, limited storage possibilities at our farm. We could uh, storage the apples just till December. Um, so we use that quantity to make the apple juice. If we did nothing, the, those apples were lost. Now we can make... Uh, a juice from it. Uh, we uh, sell them in our own uh, bistros and we sell it in the shops. So the revenue for us is the profits from the farm, from the apples, the shop and the bistro. So for us it's a big success. Um, we make soup from the ugly vegetables. It's the, it's the same uh, as the apples, uh, the vegetables who are not uh, retail quality, who have not the right look and feel, we use to make the soup. Um, we are uh, active. We have activities in the small, in the short ch chain supply, but the biggest quality of our vegetables go to the long chain. Um, and when they are rejected there, we use them to make soup. We invested the large soup kettle for 500 liter liters of soup. And we have a project for school when we make every day fresh soup for the students who go there. And we sell soup in jars from one liter. Uh, we sell them in our farm shop. And this is really our cup of tea. This is where we are good at. This is what our employees are good at. Um, we don't have the transportation costs. It goes directly from our farm to our kitchen, to our bistros, to the schools. So uh, this is uh, a real viable product for us. And now we are testing with pear syrup. Uh, it's the same as apples. We can't store them a really uh, long time. Um, it's in production now. The sales channels that we are using is gift baskets from our farm shop and pancakes in our bistro. It really suits our uh, seed to plate strategy, so we think it will be a big success. The challenges we are uh, facing 
in this trial and error of food waste are the logistical issues. Um, we have really have to take into account the, the way the food waste is uh, going, uh, if you have to collect it, if it's with a large uh, trucks, if it's full truck, it's not full truck. Uh, that's, um, uh, yeah, it has to have a big impact on if it's viable or not. Uh, for us, it's also financial resources. Um, you have to invest in the right machinery if you want to scale up and have a, big, a good quality of finished product. Uh, the R&D investment, uh, we tried uh, with, um, to make some spreads from our vegetables, but they exploded because of the fermentation process. So we don't have the R&D uh, knowledge in our organization, so then it's really hard to make uh, product innovations. Um, you have to find customers who want to pay for it. Um, and good match in partners is also important because we have a social, we are a social organization. Uh, it doesn't go as fast as some normal organization in, in normal economy. So it's, it's really important that the partner know it as and, and respects it. Um, for our organization, it was also stay close to our core, do what we are good at, uh, know what we are good at, and that's really important. Okay, um, now we are coming back to you with to the results of the poll. You can also uh, see them, um, I think so. So what we see here is that um, we are very glad to hear that you also think, or the most of you think, that sustainable food systems can't exist without this kind of food hubs. So that's something to take into account. But it's also good to hear uh, from uh, the people that don't agree, why they think that it's not necessary. Um, Brecht, after me, will tell you how we can come in contact, because we also um, um, have learned from the chat that a lot of people, they have not a lot of questions, but they have a lot of uh, requests to, to get in contact with some of one of us who has been talking during this uh, workshop. So that's, that's nice, you can always come in contact. Um, so that's something that we will uh, take along, as well as, uh, and as for sure also, the answer to the second question is that you think that you have a role to play in setting up this kind of food up. So please, yes, uh, get in contact with us to, uh, to find out how we can uh, cooperate. And then uh, about which challenge should we tackle first, um, they are different, but it's clearly the third one, saying that we should cleverly connect what is already with what is already existing. So that's more than 50% than uh, is telling us that, while also logistics and financial be financially affordable is also, of course, an, an important thing. Um, but yes, I think also that's, that's really a, a, a big uh, challenge because, um, as we know, there are really and you have seen just three kind of initiatives during this workshop. And there are much more uh, initiatives, of course, and also spread out over the whole of uh, Flanders. So, um, yeah, I think we, we, we should find out where could be uh, a kind of, um, um, let's say, an, 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 a, a space to, ex to, to set up an experiment and to find out yeah, like a pilot project. So a kind of pilot project and to, to, to find out what are the lessons that we can learn so, so we can build on further uh, on this kind of thing. And why are we doing this is also because you, I don't know if you uh, were there yesterday, but as you know, there is this um, 
uh, follow-up of the roadmap. And in the follow-up of the roadmap, one of the things that has been uh, uh, put as one of the main actions, the main actions lines, you had different over there, is um, the uh, strengthening of the regional distribution platforms. And one of the actions within this uh, main line is setting up food hubs, or at least finding out how food hubs could function as part of a sustainable food system. So. Um, what we would like to do is, therefore also we had this, this workshop and this uh, plan, this prevention plan was set up together with the, with the, with the Flemish uh, uh, Waste Agency. Um, so what we would like to do is, with the answers that you gave and with the, the information that you gave through the chat, and I hope that we have, that we keep on in touch also after this, that we can really start a, a discussion, start a dialogue about what, how ca could we set up this kind of food hub and what would be the best thing to do and what would be the first step to do. And I think if we have a lot of information, if we have a lot of opinion on it and we can really together find out what could be the best strategy with all the uh, important stakeholders um, being part of it, I think maybe then uh, it is possible to get really, to make a success out of it. So we've uh, reached the end of, uh, of our workshop. Um, so I had the honor to start it off and I have the honor to um, end this, uh, this webinar, this first webinar of uh, the second day of the Food Waste Fest. Um, so like Caro said, we had not too many questions, but we had several um, ideas from people uh, listening to this webinar. Um, I, people had their own initiatives, people that want to network, that want to cooperate um, with the people that presented here, but also with other people um, who are stakeholders in, in, the, in the fight against food waste um, that we are uh, fighting at the moment. So since creating food hubs is all about cooperating, is all about creating a network locally, regionally, but also cross-border, um, we wanted, of course, not only to have uh, the, your ideas right now in the public chat or in the, in the conversation we have um, in this webinar, but we also want your ideas, um, connections, your inspiring articles, even videos, or if you want to be part of, uh, of, the, create, of the process to create food hubs in your, your local area, um, we, want, we want to get to know you and we want, of course, uh, your idea to share that you, that you can share it with us. And we've uh, created a, a form um, that is uh, accessible through the link in, in, in this PowerPoint. Uh, it shares, share it with, it, it with us here. And in this form, you can, you can share your questions, your ideas, your thoughts. Um, even maybe you don't have them now or you come across some, some, some brilliant idea and you want to share it with us, you can access this, this form the, through that link. Of course, you can also email us um, or even call. Uh, um, and you will reach uh, the, the offices of Herwin and you can ask for uh, Caro or, or Brecht um, if, if, you're, if you're on the line. Um, I will happily answer your, your question. So everyone who've answered, uh, asked a question and we didn't give an answer yet, we will give your, your, you an answer uh, later on. We have your contact details um, and you can be in touch with us through the form, through the, the email or uh, the telephone number. So this is it. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention um, this morning um, and I hope you have a, a very productive and interesting, inspiring uh, day here at the, the Food Waste Fest at this virtual uh, event. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.